the never-ending story, the fantasy novel that spawned a film that has become a beloved icon of 80s pop culture, is now receiving the reboot treatment with a brand new series of films. The term reboot has now come to elicit immediate groans and accusations of creative bankruptcy from fans. Upon hearing this news, this was my reaction as well. However, depending on its development and execution, I feel that this remake presents an interesting opportunity to see an adaptation that more closely adheres to the novel and its primary themes. In this video, I'd like to discuss the history of the never-ending story and its film adaptations and break down everything we know regarding this new attempt to bring the beloved book to life on screen. The Never-Ending Story is a fantasy novel written by German writer Michael Ende and published in 1979. The story revolves around Bastian Balthazar Bucks, a shy, awkward, and imaginative child who comes to seek solace in an old, mysterious book titled The Never-Ending Story. He becomes immersed into the magical tale set in the realm of Fantastica, ruled over by the benevolent, childlike empress, whose land is threatened by the malevolent force known as the Nothing. As the empress falls ill, the young warrior Atreyu is chosen to undertake the quest to find a cure. While reading, Bastion begins to suspect that the characters within the storybook are actually aware of his presence. Bastion then finds himself on his own quest, having to confront his fears and insecurities and the consequences of his actions, as he realizes the fate of Fantastica depends on his imagination. The novel was a resounding success in Germany, remaining at the top of the bestseller list for years, and went on to become an international hit, translated into 45 languages and selling millions of copies. Following the release of the English translation in 1983, a film adaptation soon began development. The never-ending story film, directed by Wolfgang Peterson, released in 1984, the film made several key alterations from the book, such as changing the name of the magical realm from Fantastica to Fantasia and presenting Falcor the Luck Dragon as a dog instead of having the head of a lion. Also, in its shorter runtime compared to today's standards at around 90 minutes, the film only covered the first half of the novel. The movie turned out to be a commercial success, and through the years, it remained beloved for its immersive story, charming characters, hard-hitting emotional beats, and epic soundtrack. It became an icon of 80s fantasy films and pop culture, whose popularity continues to endure to this day. Two sequel films were later developed, with The NeverEnding Story 2, the next chapter, releasing in 1990. The sequel used plot elements from the unused second half of the novel, but further diverted from the source material by introducing a new storyline. The never-ending Story 3, Escape from Fantasia, released in 1994. Although it included characters from Ende's book, it had a wholly original story with no basis in the novel. These additions ended up becoming commercial failures, panned by critics, and were nowhere close to reaching the same acclaim as the first film. The original movie's production was marred by controversy, as the book's author, who was initially positive about the prospect of a film adaptation and even collaborated on the first film with the director as script advisor, was disgusted by the finished product. Ende claimed that Peterson had rewritten the script without consulting him, and citing the many deviations from the source material, ended up suing the producers when his request to halt production or change the film's title were denied. He lost the case and criticized the film adaptation as a gigantic melodrama of kitsch, commerce, plush, and plastic, highlighting his profound disappointment with the portrayal of his cherished creation. It is unfortunate that the author felt so disappointed with the original film and had such a contentious experience with those adapting his work. While I, like many others, think it'd be a mistake to attempt a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the 1984 film, I find myself intrigued by the possibility of a more faithful adaptation of the book with a fresh storytelling approach and the benefits of modern filmmaking techniques and technology. Attempts were made as far back as 2009 to create a new adaptation, but were unsuccessful in securing the rights to Ende's novel. Then it was revealed in an exclusive by deadline in September of 2022 that a bidding war was underway by a handful of streamers and studios for the rights to the now late author's book. 
More recently, on March 20th, 2024, in an exclusive by Variety, it was confirmed that the never-ending story will once again be adapted for the big screen with a series of films in a joint venture partnership between Michael Ende Productions and Seesaw Films, who have been granted the rights by Ende's executor, Dr. Wolf Dieter von Grenau. Seesaw is a British-Australian film and television company whose productions include The King's Speech, Top of the Lake, and adaptations such as Lion, The Power of the Dog, and the television series Slow Horses and Heartstopper. Seesaw's producer Ian Canning, in speaking with Variety about this new venture, said, quote, The story is both timely and timeless, and really has an opportunity to be told in a fresh way. And part of the specialness of the book is that you can go back to it at different ages in your life and find different levels of meaning. So how wonderful that we have this opportunity to do a fresh perspective that will have new layers and meanings. We just believe that every generation deserves their own journey into Fantastica. In speaking about the quest to find the right production partner, Ralph Gassman, who works with Ende's long-standing editor and estate curator, Roman Hawk, said, We've been completely overwhelmed with interest from the television and film industry in recent years, but it was only about four to five years ago when we felt it was right to go back to Fantastica with new, fresher attention. So then we looked at hundreds and hundreds of requests and just thought, let's see if we find a potential partner amongst them that is so compelling that they make us jump into the boat with them and go on this crazy adventure. But we knew we had to do it right and find the right partner, and luckily, Seesaw was amongst them. For Michael Ende Productions and Seesaw, the next stage is to assemble the right creative team. Ian Canning commented on this next step saying, the journey in many ways starts now. There's been a lot of anticipation from people who love this story and about what the next steps would be. For us, we now need to speak to writers and directors and hear their passion for the material. Canning also revealed to Variety that details such as the exact number of films to be made will depend on the creatives involved, but did share that it will likely be an international production with exotic filming locations that lend themselves to the many strange and wonderful environments described in the novel and hopefully maintaining a connection to the book's heritage by shooting some scenes in Germany like the 1984 film did. For Hawk, who began working alongside Enda in the early 1980s and continued for nearly two decades until the author's passing in 1995, this new adaptation of the never-ending story represents more than just an opportunity to create a tribute to the author. He said, quote, We need stories like we need the air to breathe and water to survive. They give our inner worlds quality, and with this quality, we make decisions of quality. Stories make the world better, and the never-ending story is the story of all stories. These are all admirable sentiments that I sincerely hope are more than PR statements. In order to truly succeed in adapting the author's original work, whoever embarks on the journey must possess genuine passion and a deep understanding of the source material. More recent adaptations of beloved fictional books like Denis Villeneuve's Dune have reignited the debate over whether a faithful one-to-one -one book to film adaptation is achievable, particularly for dense science fiction or fantasy stories that carry complex mythologies. Many argue that logistical challenges and budget constraints make it nearly impossible. However, I'm left wondering whether this new adaptation of Michael Ende's book could be the experiment that proves otherwise. Could the never-ending story be faithfully translated into a series of films? Considering the author's wishes, at the end of the day, I earnestly hope for a cinematic adaptation that strikes truer to his original vision. But I'm curious to know what do you think of the idea of a new adaptation of the never-ending story? Do you feel that a version that strikes truer to the book would be met with more optimism by existing fans of the original film? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. And if you're looking for other ways to show your appreciation, you can check out my Patreon page, where members get access to exclusive content and perks. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.